So I am Shanka McGlory. I am the owner of Mocha Books Bookstore, and I am here with Miss Belinda May. Um, she is an author, and I'm going to let her um, officially introduce herself and um, her work. Okay. Well, Shanka, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, I am excited to be speaking on your platform because my goal as an author is to promote positive Black family images and literacy. And I think that really aligns with your platform. So I'm happy to be here. I am the author of four children's books. Uh, two of them are award winners. I am God's Affirmation for Boys and I am God's Affirmation for Little Girls. They are Purple Heart, Purple Dragonfly, sorry, Purple Dragonfly Award winner, Christian Indie Book Award winner, awesome. and Book Excellence Award. So I, I'm very proud of them. I am, you told me you were in Oklahoma, and I'm just a little bit south of you here in Texas, in Houston, Texas. I'm <laughs> born and raised in Texas, Beaumont, down by Houston. We live in Houston now, but uh, I went to school in Austin, Texas, and that's where I met my husband. We lived in the Dallas Fort Worth area, so I've been all oh, over Texas. <laughs> <laughs> busy, busy. <laughs> yes, very, very busy. And uh, you know, I mentioned earlier to you, I tell the audience that I have three children. My husband and I have three kids. I have an eleven-year-old, a six-year-old, and a four-year-old. Oh, you have tiny babies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I stayed in um, Dallas, I think, um, for probably like three months. And I was still in my like early 20s. And I called my mom and I'm like, nope, get me a ticket. Nope. I'm ready to go. It was so busy. Yeah. <laughs> Dallas is busy. And let me clarify where exactly I was, because I was I was actually we started off in Fort Worth and then we moved north of Fort Worth towards the Denton area in South Lake area. So we actually weren't in Dallas, and I need to, mm -hmm. to make that distinction because if you tell someone from Fort Worth about Dallas and Dallas about Fort Worth, <laughs> you would swear they're like opposite states. And right. <laughs> so I was actually not living in Dallas, although we, my husband worked in Dallas and spent time in Dallas and Fort Worth, but we were in that DFW area. <laughs> awesome. So what um, inspired you to begin writing or to even to begin uh, publishing your books? So this is a very good question, and I'll take you uh, along a little bit of history lane with me. So I've been writing, even throughout school, I remember writing in writing contests and winning some awards here and there. I remember writing while I was in college. I wrote for the Houston Tillotson newsletter. I remember being uh, doing some poetry, and I actually was in a poetry slam and got to perform with Nikki Giovanni. Oh, I was cool. in undergrad. Yes, that was very exciting. It was very cool. But um, I had never really thought to be a published children's book author. I did seek to publish poems and maybe do a story. I have diabetes. And one of the things that I was actually taking a writing class about was learning how to tell my story about having diabetes, wanting to help other people. In the process of doing that, I joined Toastmasters. I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with Toastmasters, but it's an organization that helps you with leadership and communication skills. Mm -hmm. And through Toastmasters, I got into a speech contest, a tall tale speech contest, so that Paul Bunyan style speech contest. But I flipped it and I made it about my father. So it was about my dad who could do anything, he could fix anything, and he ends up getting into a fight with a cockroach. <laughs> and so that speech is very funny and people loved it. It became my daughter who's 11 now, her bedtime story. Aww. And I had a lot of coworkers approach me and they said, you know, you should, that's very funny. You should turn that into a book. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not interested in doing anything like that. But um, over the course of that year, following that speech contest, which I won uh, up to the district level, I, my father passed away. And um, one of the things I wanted to do do I actually did get to perform the speech for him before he passed away okay. but with his death I used that speech as a way to honor him mm -hmm. and I decided to take the information that I gained through those publishing classes and writing classes and actually publish the my amazing dad speech that's my first book about my father so I, I went through the editing and the illustration process got that book published and that became my first book. And so that's really how I got started with publishing children's books. 
And in the process of it, I would go and read the book to kids. And of course, like you just telling the story, they would laugh. Mm -hmm. You know, they would mm -hmm. laugh. They love the story. It's very funny. And so I enjoy that. And I started to see in a lot of places where we were, little children of color, black kids, Hispanic kids, whatever, they really enjoyed the story. And I start looking around on the bookshelves of the mm -hmm. libraries and mm -hmm. the places where I was going, and I did not see a lot of us. And so if you look at my bibliography, you'll see the My Amazing Dad. Um, the illustrations of that were, they look Arabian just about because the illustrator that I had, I just said, here, here's the text, you know, illustrate it. And it's funny because now looking back on it, um, they took that story of me, a little girl, um, honoring my father and made it into a little boy honoring his father with his little brother and the images just didn't represent me mm -hmm. but the story is good and a good story is a good story so it was okay with me but on the second book that I did seven days with daddy I became more purposeful and wanted those images to reflect my daughter my husband people that I wanted to, these kids to see so you'll see as throughout my publishing journey I became more purposeful of wanting to reflect those positive Black family images and wanting to uh, encourage literacy. So the second book has more repetition. It's designed to be a reading tool where those kids, you know, when they read that story and they hear those repetitive words, they pick up those reading skills and uh, it teaches numbers all in the form of a story. So my education background is in computer science, but also I have a master's in curriculum instruction. So I became more purposeful with those images, those teaching and the things that I really found my purpose, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, mm -hmm. you know, from my father's death to where I am today is wanting to each project to be a reflection of literacy, family values, black, black families, you know, wanted to have that purpose. Awesome. I like that um, your titles tell your story, like it's a journey. You first had the story of, of your father and you wanted to get this book out and then you made it, um, like you said, more purposeful. So it was like you could see your journey and the um, evolution of your journey in those stories. I think that's really cool. I also love um, that you have both an affirmations for boys and an affirmations for girls. I don't always like you know, to hear and say boys books and girls books, but if we're being real, you know, there are not a lot of positive um, black boy books. There are so many for girls and, and you know, they could probably see their, themselves in that through the story, but the actual illustrations, they will not be able to see themselves because most of them are always for girls. So I love that you have one for both. Exactly. And, you know, my book journey is a reflection of my life. You know, it's a reflection of my family. The first book is about my father. The second book is about my husband and my daughter. The third book was the affirmations. We took the affirmations that my husband and I were teaching our daughters and wanting to give other parents, other Sunday school teachers, a tool to introduce by biblical concepts about who they are um, and not what the world says about them. You know, it's about inner beauty. It's about the way you treat people. It's about those positive things. And with the birth of my son, as I mentioned, you know, my son is the youngest one. And we started teaching him his affirmations. But of course, we're not going to use the I am beautiful for my son. So we start looking at what are the different things, you know, wanting to teach him confidence. And that confidence is not, it's not about, you know, what shoes you have on or what kind of car you're driving. It's still about that, that inner characteristic, but it's written from a perspective, you know, to a male because it's a different audience. You know, a young boy is, is different. Right. And so you, we wanted to, to have parents and those boys be able to see themselves in that book. So, yeah, we, we did a different version of the book. Yeah. I love that. Is there, well, are, have there been any challenges? You self publish your books, right? That is correct. So it's funny that funny that you asked that because um, initially with the first book, My Amazing Dad, I wanted to self-publish it to honor my father. It was just a tribute to my dad. That's what I wanted to do. The second book, it was taking that first publishing experience, building on that and saying, okay, 
now I know what to do, but I want to be more purposeful. Mm -hmm. With the third book, I actually shopped that out to a publisher. I was actually trying to get it traditionally published because I believed in it so much. I, I wanted it to be a movement. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be something that was lasting because it's built on the word of God, which is forever, right? Mm -hmm. So it's something that should last and span decades. I wanted it to be that. And I pitched it to a couple of publishers and Christian publishers, uh, mind you, this book has now won a Christian Indie Award. But I had publishers come back and tell me, the idea is good, it's not what we're looking for. Or I like the idea, but we don't know how we could sell that. We don't know if there's an audience for that. But I believed in it so much that I went ahead and self-published the third and fourth book as well. And it was a challenge because during that time, I lost my editor. I lost my illustrator that I had worked with on the first two books. And I had to go through the process of finding another illustra illustrator, finding another um, editor. Mm -hmm. And God came through. I, for the, the girl book, I got a black female editor, right. a black female illustrator, <laughs> book designer, and you know we were rocking and rolling but i i will tell you it was it was very much a challenge but we came out of it uh you know very very much triumphantly how was it building those new relationships with, with your i will tell you it was hard be it was hard it was a challenge because um the process of losing my editor was actually pretty funny. I was working on another book that wasn't going to be the I Am book. That was not originally my third book. It was another book that I was working on. And the editor and I had a difference of opinion about some things. And it was, it was almost deflating because we just could not agree, could not come to the eye to eye. So I actually had to shelve that book uh, and put it on the back burner. Then with my illustrator, um, they are over. They were overseas. The first illustrator was overseas, and they were in a worn, torn part of the world. And they were working on my illustrations for that very same book that the editor kind of just blew me off on. And um, they emailed me one day and they said, "Hey, um, you know, we're in the middle of a project now." They gave me some illustrations. They're in the middle of this, and they said. We're not gonna be able to work on your project anymore. And I'm like, what? Oh, wow. And I've never heard from them since. So that, yes. Wow. So, so when I say it was a challenge, it was really a challenge having to, to say, okay, are they gonna come back? Is some, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening? I don't know. And I don't, I've never, I never knew. And then it's funny after I, I published these books, then they come back and they say, hey, do you have any work for us? And I'm like, right. No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, no, I don't think so. So, you know, building those relationships, though, to your point, um, I think I had to search inside myself and find some confidence to say, you know what, you, you have an idea and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter who's working on this project. This project is going to be successful because of what it means. Right. And I think that was the hardest part is to keep going. And I'm glad I kept going. I, I am too. I love it. That's really crazy that they just, I'm, how do you just tell someone you don't want to work on their story and then just totally go ghost? That's, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and that's the and first for me hearing that. <laughs> they went for a ghost for like two years. Oh I mean, it wasn't God. just like a week. It was like two years. And literally after I published these books, they come back and I'm like, what no. like what's going on yeah. <laughs> like i wish you well um, but thank you <laughs> yeah 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 and i and i did i said that i thanked them for their work in the past but I, I just could not i could no longer do that you know that that's just not something i was interested in doing anymore so when um was your last book published so uh the i am god's affirmation for little boys was published in november of last year Mm -hmm. And um, the, the paperback form and then the hardback form came out a little bit later. I think I have that correct, saying that correct. Um, but yeah, so that book was published last year. And over the duration of the summer, my husband, uh, Dr. Anthony Mays, and I have written a fifth book together. So we're actually 
working on that. That book is going to be, uh, you know how all the time you have your, your, your little kids, I don't know if anybody else has nieces and nephews that they don't have kids. So I was like, you know, can I go with you? Can I go with you? So we took that concept. Ooh, I have. And, <laughs> oh, my you goodness. Know, yeah, so we took that concept. But what I wanted to do with that concept, again, my purpose is, you know, about literature and education and Black family. So what I took that concept and wanted to show kids in the form of a book how they go from, you know, leaving the house to leaving their neighborhood to their city, to their country, and out in the world, maybe, you know, even further into out of space. So it's really kind of getting those early concepts about mm -hmm. geography out. And, uh, and, and I like my books to be something that, you know, they're good for bedtime stories, but also conversation. So you can mm -hmm. point at pictures and say, hey, what are they doing? What kind of, you know, what do they have on? So using these books as a learning tool and that one will eventually have a workbook with it too that'll have some actual actual geography concepts like landscapes and things like that to, for kids to go over I'm excited, I'm about, excited that. about it I am so excited I always encourage people to you know go beyond the book it's more than the stories uh, it's more than the uh, the words you know even the illustrations on the cover like what do you think is going to happen what you know what are your predictions? And I, I, I love that. So, um, and I'm a pre-K teacher's assistant. I work with pre-K. So I'm like, that's, that's a really great concept. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And I, yes, I, yes. And that's, yeah. When you mentioned the nieces, good, and the good, kids, good. I'm I like, wait, I, was I have one that never leaves my side. Yeah. I'm like, don't you want to go home? <laughs> <laughs> they're like no no right. I want to go with you <laughs> wherever you go right and yeah. We left yeah so that's good I will okay. definitely keep you posted on that I will keep you posted on this yes. book when it comes out I'll make sure to give you a copy to share with your kiddos and do maybe review let me know what you think I'd be interested especially with your perception of a pre-k teacher because that's really what I have in mind is mm -hmm. kind of a teaching tool you know to introduce the kids to those concepts without really knowing that they're learning these concepts. Right, right. That's awesome. I love that. Especially in, um, when I heard you talk about, uh, you know, you have uh, curriculum instruction, like you have um, a background in that. How is, do you use it now that we're in like this virtual world now going on? Because I, I know there's a lot of and structures and teachers and um, curriculum that needs to be changed so much because we have to adapt to, you know, being virtual. Well, I will respond to that in two ways. One, I'll respond to that with the reason why I got into curriculum instruction, because as I mentioned, my undergrad is in computer science. Mm -hmm. So I went into graduate school wanting to teach adult computer skills, because at that time, you had a lot of uh, older adults, and you still have it to a certain extent, who did mm -hmm. not have some basic computer skills, like how to use Word and how to do those things. Mm -hmm. And that was really my focus. But um, I got in that IT world and I worked in, you know, I couldn't get lulled away from my salary. You know, the, the teaching the adult thing was more volunteer work. And I did that for a little while. I volunteered and I taught adults. But what happened is I transitioned in my career to where I started writing a lot of user guides. Mm -hmm. user guides and how-to guides for, for users and administrators and it's still a lesson in that about teaching because you have to know your audience you have mm -hmm. to know how to break things down when you're writing these user guides so I don't write a user guide for a system administrator the same way I would write for a typical day-to-day -day user mm -hmm. and I say that when when you're teaching children it's kind of the same thing. You have to know that child. You know, these teachers have a very challenging job. And I'm, mm -hmm. I tell my teachers, one of the things I always try to tell them is um, I can't wait to partner with you because I feel like right now, especially during this time, we're partners. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not the teacher, but I do try to make sure that my kid is online, on time. I try to make sure that they're engaged. I try to understand what it is that they're doing. Um, my 11-year-old, she is so focused. She loves school. She is that kid. Okay. Now my way. six year old, <laughs> my six year old loves math and science and everything else is optional. <laughs> so, <laughs> so 
so for her, it's more of making sure that, okay, I know you don't want to do it, but let's do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Can I help you? Can I sit with you? Can, can we do something else that that'll be more interesting to you or something like that? So I feel that um, with the curriculum instruction degree that I have, that I, I am using it at work more so than I am teaching. I will not say I'm replacing my children's teachers. But when it comes to helping them with homework, I do think having that background of how to break stuff down and go follow the curriculum that their teacher is giving them. Because I know my daughter will have math and I'm like, I didn't learn it that way. Right. But I have to stop myself and say, OK, she's learning it this way. Let me try to, you know, think how she, they're doing their curriculum, because my first thought is like, I didn't learn it that way. That's not right. <laughs> you know, so many steps. I'm like, can we just get to the answer? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm trying to to make sure that I know what they're doing as far as their curriculum at their school and and just how to be helpful and and, and not uh not do anything contradictory to that mm -hmm. or not you know get on them for you know I'm, I'm blessed I will say I'm blessed that uh, I don't think that my kids struggle in school but one of the things we did in the summer my oldest girl that's 11 and my son who is is now four I actually gave her her first job this time we sat down we wrote a job description and her job description was to teach her brother pre-k basically teach him his numbers and I think that my curriculum instruction did come in handy that way because I told her these are the things these this is the curriculum for your brother this is what we're going to be learning mm -hmm. I gave her a, a post-test pre-test type of format and think you know ideas of things to do uh, a sample schedule and she signed that agreement and we paid her she got her first job this summer I and love then it. with <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <laughs> and then with the youngest one i went off of some of the online games and materials that her kindergarten teacher had mm -hmm. and i kept her doing those things through the summer now we didn't do them as rigorously so we would do maybe an hour a day, but we mm -hmm. did it every Monday through Thursday. She got Friday off. And I think doing stuff like that helps prevent that summer slide. Yeah. You know, it helps keep her on track. Um, and so those are some of the things that I think with my background, and I won't say just my, my husband's background is in education too. So I have to give him some, some prop too, between the <laughs> two of us. We, we just make sure that we just keep hitting you all throughout the, the day throughout the year throughout the summer you know we have our days off too but we try to make sure that we don't let them get into a period where they're not learning we keep books around the house i think this is very important for parents we have various little libraries around yes, the house yes yes in, in the car in I the agree. car you know you get in the car mm -hmm. so just keep those things everywhere and even if they're just looking at them flipping the cover back and forth you know something may trigger that imagination um so i think I, those type of things i think is what that background is. i love it that's great yeah that's really really important especially having those libraries all around the house you know i always encourage families and parents and you know all guardians because you know they're all different kinds of families um yeah but yeah just have them out that you, yeah. you get bored or whatever but you know i think they're just not using their creativity so they can stop at any given moment anywhere in the house and there's a book you never know if they're mm -hmm. going to pick it up or not so that's that's really that's a really great recommendation i love that yeah and i would say one other thing is to make sure that if you have someone who is not maybe an avid reader, because I think kids are different. I think you have some that they love to read. It's just mm -hmm. automatic. It's just them the way they are. And then you have some they'll read, but it has to be something they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have one of those. She loves animals. So we don't want to read certain things, but if I get a book on animals, she will sit there front to back and, and read. She loves animals. So if you find something, I, I remember having a, a student that, um, I was teaching in the summer at college. I was teaching some high school students and I had one that loved basketball. I couldn't get her attention with anything else. But then one day I had her do an assignment on basketball. Oh, she right then we connected. We connected and we've been connected ever since. Love it. Yep. Yep. As soon as you find out what they like, just my son is into graphic novels. I can't get him to pick up. I'm like, okay, let's 
let's balance it out. So I'll give you a graphic novel and then let's read this chapter book. And he's like, eh, like I, whatever it is, whether it's history, anything, it has to be in a graphic novel format or he's not going for it. And he's 14. So I'm like, yeah. It's, <laughs> it drives me crazy, but I understand, you know, that's if I want him to read and encourage him to read, then that's what I have to go for because he's not going to read anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you have to do sometimes. Yeah. You got to nourish what they like, you know. <laughs> Keep pushing them, but you, they like what they like. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I always like to ask um, about favorite writers. And I know some people get stuck because they're like, there's so many writers. But do you have a favorite writer? I actually have two. And both of them are more along the poetry side. Mm -hmm. So I, of course, love Nikki Giovanni. She's one of my favorite poets. I love poetry <laughs> books. And Shel Silverstein is on the children's side. You know, mm -hmm. he has a, a children's book called, I think, it's, uh, what's on top? I actually have it right here. Oh, Everything on It is what it's called. Everything on It. And that's one of my favorite books. It has poetry for, I say it's for children, but really as an adult, I love it too. I read a lot of mm -hmm. children's books. Yeah. <laughs> mother, but Shel Silverstein and Nikki Giovanni are two, two of my favorites because I just think that the poetry is witty and it's, it's kind of like slapstick, you know. I think when I read it, it it's almost, I, I feel like, oh man, I could have written this, you know. I, it's like, I, I love it so much. I feel like it's, it's just in my wheelhouse, you know. And I feel that their writings are so empowering and entertaining because mm -hmm. as an author, for me, a lot of my writing, I like to have it have a little bit of entertainment value so that parents don't mind if this is something their kids want to read over and over. They don't mind that. I mean, there's some stories when my kid gives it to me, I'm like, oh, not that one again. So <laughs> I don't want to be that. <laughs> I want to be a little bit of entertaining and have, have um, some value in it. So those are my, those are my two favorites. Awesome. I've actually never heard of him. You said Shale? Yes, Shale oh. Silverstein. Yes, oh. and yeah, Silverstein. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. I have to look that up. Is that Marvin Gaye behind you? I keep like it is. Cracking. I'm like, cool. I like that. <laughs> Those are stamps. Yes, that's the Marvin Gaye uh, book of stamps. Cool. Yes. Is it? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah. is awesome. Yeah, it is. So, oh, yeah, and cool. I've used some of them. So I have to buy another one, but yes, it's so once you use all the stamps, you can actually have that as a keepsake. So was that by Kadir? Do you know? Um, I don't know. I don't know. It looks it like says. something Kadir Nelson will. I love him as an illustrator. He's amazing. Yeah, I don't see a, uh, any credit to the illustrator on here, so I'm not sure. Well, I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm gonna have to find those. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of good good stamps um that are coming in the post office and what i like about them is even after you use the stamps you can still have that picture mm -hmm. kind of as a keepsake so i could actually frame that picture if i wanted to and if i had several of them i could put them together in a nice little frame so i like what the post office is doing there <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so what do you like to do outside of um writing like just for fun on a normal day um what would you and your family be doing so it's funny you ask that because uh, I was thinking to myself, I'm such a nerd. I was like, yesterday uh, was my day. I had some free time um, after the kids got out of school and I decided to rebuild a computer. I was like, who does that? Oh, um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I love a variety of things. And actually, uh, water sports is one of my favorites. I love getting oh. out women. I love the beach. I love jet skiing. I love all things water. I've loved that for a long time. Are you a water sign? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm a Gemini, so I'm not a water no. sign. We're, we're, we're not looking good to, uh, to, you know, right now. We've got a lot of bad representation out there, but yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, the other thing I like to do is uh, eat. Believe it or not, um, mm -hmm. I like to go out to eat. I like to cook. Um, when I get off, one of the things that I've been doing over COVID and and my family thanks me because it's like, you've got a lot better in your cooking lately you know because <laughs> you're just doing it more you know the more you do mm -hmm. something the better you get at it so I really like cooking I like water sports and I love music I love almost oh, every kind of music except for heavy metal you can miss me with that but everything else is fair game <laughs> yeah that, that sounds that's pretty much sounds the same with me I can't I can do rock but yeah the heavy metal is just 
Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I can't. I've tried. I just, I'm not there. I'm sorry. <laughs> and um, I think um, one thing that I didn't mention that probably anyone who knows me will say is I love line dancing. So all of those dances, Cupid Shuffle and all of those, like, I'm there. I'm that person who That's will so funny know every dance. That. <laughs> because that is one of my goals for the, the fall and the winter. I'm trying to learn how to, I have um, two twin siblings and uh, a brother and they can get that like they, they just be on it and I'm like okay yeah. can y'all teach me and it's crazy yeah. because the things that they know how to do and I want to learn I haven't learned how like I, I can't swim and all three of them are life bars like why don't I know how to swim wow. like what, what are y'all doing <laughs> So, y'all like yeah. opposite ends of the spectrum yeah. there. <laughs> and, and I'm the oldest. So I'm like, uh, can y'all help me out? <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. I would love to learn how to line dance. That's, it looks so fun, especially now they've incorporated it into um, exercise. You know how they're doing the step line dancing? I, I love that. I would love yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. This seems mm -hmm. so fun. Yeah. Cool. It is. It is. It's, it's a lot of fun. And I miss, I miss it. I miss doing that in large crowds together, being with other people and doing that family reunions. You know, I miss all of that. And I can't wait till we get back to a point where we're all doing that together. So how is it working, um, trying to promote and market your work um, with the current state of, you know, our nation? How is that working? It's different. Um, I will say that I've been fortunate enough that uh, I think my book has taken off to where now it's a lot of word of mouth. Someone buys it, they tell someone that other person buys it. So I have a lot of that going on, but I do miss the interaction with the kids. One of the things I love to do is school visits. I haven't had an opportunity to do online visits, but I am available for online visits if anybody's listening. Um, <laughs> but I really enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy having um, feed, instant feedback from the kids. You know, when I'm reading a story and I'm, I'm reading that story and the kids are laughing, they're smiling, um, or, or even with the story with the repetition, a lot of times when I go read that story, by the time I get to the end of it, the kids are, they're reading it with me because they already know what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And I love that. That that's just that feedback. That's that interaction that I miss. Um, I also miss going to conferences or other type of book fairs and mm -hmm. networking with other authors. But I will say, as far as book sales, um, they have been steady. But I do miss the camaraderie with other authors, and I miss the interaction uh, with the kids. I, I hear that. Sorry, I'm being distracted. My nephew, he keeps <laughs> coming up. My, he's two. And oh, he that's okay. To, I, can I have I, water? And yeah. can you give me this? And I'm like, <laughs> stay away. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, my, my son is, uh, he's right here in the media room and he's kind of doing the same thing. But I, I have my 11 uh, year old here and she's like running defense. Like, hey, right. No. <laughs> and I, I asked my son to do that right before I got on. He has his, his, headphones in and he's on the computer so he ain't he ain't heard nothing yeah. <laughs> Hold on, it's okay it's the way we the way we are right now i had a a, a good friend of mine she she did a post the other day and i was just dying laughing she said i had a interview with my executive well not an interview i had a presentation in front of my executive and my son never never jumps in front of the screen and lo and behold he gets in front of me behind me naked naked <laughs> So yeah, yeah, we're getting good laughs out of this. Yeah, this is definitely those times. It's it's so crazy now. Um, yeah. Is there um, anything that you would like to share? Um, do you have uh, pictures of your book with you? I have a copy of well, um, the one for girls, and I left it out in my office. I'm so sad about that. <laughs> yes. That's okay. So hopefully I can show this. I don't know how it looks on screen, but yes, I have. Um, this is the book for girls, and mm -hmm. I guess the only thing I will share is that I would love for um, people, if they want to contact me, to go to my website. If you want to check out the book, it's BelindaMays.com, B-E-L-I-N-D-A-M-A-Y-S.com, and they can sign up for a newsletter. I actually have free downloads. Um, most of them have to do with Father's Day, but I'm going to add some more things on there, so you can check that. You can subscribe. Oh, cool. And I actually um, now have some themes. So this is the boy book, but now I have themes that go with the book. There's shirts, there's merchandise, shirts, backpacks, 
uh, oh. computer sle uh, sleeves, mugs, and all kinds of goodies on there. So think of those for gifts. And I am available as a speaker too. So I, I, I'm actually speaking at a Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers conference on in October. So I'm available to speak. I love working with people. If you have a fear of public speaking, let me know. I can help oh, you out. I need to connect with you. <laughs> people are always yeah. like, how are you, how do you work in a school and how do you own a bookstore and you're like afraid of people? And I'm just like, the little people, I, I, I can do the little people. It's the big people. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah okay. I'll, I'll definitely have to connect with you on that. And I am definitely going to talk to um, my co-teacher, my lead teacher, um, about um, an author reading. We have to do read-alouds in our curriculum. Um, I think I have to do them Tuesdays and Thursdays. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try and see if we can get you on on that. That would be really, really awesome. Yeah, just let me know if it fits the schedule. Let me know. Most definitely. I'm willing to do it. I did one with Microsoft uh, over the summer, and it. Uh, it was. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just saying. I did one with. I did one. I did a book reading with Microsoft this summer, and it, it came out pretty nicely. Oh, they cool. they had a read aloud, and um, we had a couple of kids interacting and enjoying the event. So it was really good. Oh, that's awesome! I didn't even know they do things like that. They do. It, it was um, <laughs> it was one of the stores, the Microsoft stores here in the Houston area. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. Cool. Um, let's see. Social media. You're on social media too, right? I am. I am on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I don't know if I miss any. I think in YouTube as well. All of the same name. At Belinda Nichelle. It's B-E-L-I-N-D-A. Nichelle is N-E-C-H-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. But if you just Google Belinda Mays on any of those platforms, you ought to find me. And there's actually two of us. There's two Belinda Mays. There's really? one in Atlanta. She does, yes, it's, she does uh, real estate and business books and speaking events. So, yeah, there's actually two of us. Oh, so you're both authors, too? Yes, we're both <laughs> black female authors. Oh, it's that's like, funny. Who could have predicted that? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of times, um, I was going to say, a lot of times, that's why I put the N in the mm -hmm. Belinda N maze to distinguish us so people won't get us mixed up. Because I had a reporter actually get us mixed up before. She was interviewing me, and she pulled up her profile. I was like, oh, that's not me. Oh, <laughs> okay. I will definitely uh, have to remind myself about that. Um, so when I upload this, I'm, uh, I'm going to upload your author profile. Oh, she also has an author profile on Mocha Books. Um, our read with mochabooks.com it's in the author directory so you will be able to go to one spot to find um, her website and her social media and things like that and this um, recording will go on YouTube so all your information will also be on there and I'll make sure that I'll um, share it across other platforms but I am I was I'm really excited to um, uh, talk with you I'm glad to know about your new book coming out especially that new one I'm, I'm really really excited about that one Okay, great. Well, wonderful. But well, Shanika, I just want to thank you for allowing me on this platform. I thank you for all that you are doing because you're touching so many of our kids. Oh, and you. I just want to thank you as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're, it's a partnership. I, I, I always say that. So I wouldn't be who I am without the authors, especially because I do a lot of work with you guys and, you know, the people who, the readers and the parents. And so I'm very, very thankful for you all. All right. And I um, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.